Max, consciousness is the great unexplained fact of, of reality, and many people approach it in different ways. One of the fundamental questions is, uh, is consciousness reducible to something else? Reducible to brain states, reducible to, to, to physics. You make the claim that consciousness can be explained by physical correlates. People talk about the neural correlates of consciousness. You talk about the physical correlates of consciousness. So obviously you feel consciousness can be reduced. I don't like the phrase reduced so much because it somehow it sounds it. derogatory, <laughs> as if, whereas an emergent phenomena is normally more advanced than that from which it emerged. But yes, I, I definitely think that uh, consciousness does not require any new physics, anything beyond the, the particles that are moving around in my brain right now. If you just take that starting point and combine it with the empirical fact that I know that I'm subjectively conscious. That already tells me then that uh, there are certain w ways you can arrange particles so that they feel conscious. And that begs to me the very interesting question which has more of a physics flavor now, which is not the question of why can particle arrangements feel conscious, but what particular particle arrangements feel conscious and which ones don't. What is it about the nature of the particles arranged here that makes it conscious, whereas this arrangement does not feel conscious. And um, that is a legitimate scientific question, but it, it is grounded on, on pure physicalism, that, that the, the physical properties that we know today in our current physics, mathematics, etc., even with with some expansion, are sufficient to do that because once you're you, you get you're given the fact of consciousness and and physicalism, then it's a natural conclusion that we have to figure out why this structure is conscious and every other structure is not conscious in some way, because we know that only consciousness if you have brain you have uh, stomachs or livers or 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 uh, chairs uh, we don't think they're conscious. That's right. A very powerful approach in physics is to start with an Occam's razor assumption that you can solve the problem with just what you have, and then push it as far as it goes and see if it works. For example, people used to think that the difference between a living person and a dead person might be that there was something beyond the particles there, mm. a life force of sorts. Whereas now, we've come to realize, actually, no, the difference is that um, there's no blood flowing here, the heart is stopped, etc. It's that the particles are arranged in different ways. And, and um, I think it's fascinating to explore whether the same might hold for consciousness, whether we'll realize one day that the difference between a rock or a conscious brain versus an anesthetized unconscious brain has to do with the particular way in which the particles are moving around. More specifically, my guess is that the particles have to move around in a way that corresponds to very complex forms of information processing. And uh, I've tried to identify certain principles that this particle motion has to obey to give rise to consciousness. But at the end of that day, when you have that, when you're confident that you have the specific structure of those particles that can give rise to the information structure that can lead to consciousness, you, you have to say one of two things. Either that structure causes consciousness, which means you have another thing to explain, a causation step, or you have to say that that structure is the consciousness, that it's two ways of using language to describe exactly the same thing, the so-called identity mm -hmm. theory. And identity theory seems to have real problems because the two things, the motions of particles and the experience of inner feeling, seem like so radically different in their, in their uh, qualitative categories. But if there's anything we've discovered in the history of physics, it is that the way the mathematical equations look at first <laughs> tend to feel very different from the way we actually perceive okay. things. So, and I think in the past when we've had problems like this, the problem has turned out to be that we were simply too limited in, in our imagination. I mean, if I look at a rabbit in my backyard and contemplate that this rabbit is just grass, 
rearranged. <laughs> you know, could I have imagined that you can rearrange grass into rabbit if I didn't know there were rabbits? No, I, I couldn't have. And so I have to be open to the idea that maybe, in fact, this incredible, rich inner world I have, feeling perception of colors and flavors and thoughts and feelings, is uh, also something which simply is the way information feels when it's being processed in certain very complex ways.